Everybody, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Good to see you. And welcome to the fifth class of uh, the uh, Integral Kabbalah for the Days of Awe. This is, we're going to be talking today about the Sphira of Yesod. And in order to understand Yesod, let's do a brief recap of the Sphirot that we've done so far because. It's always important um, as we go along, it's almost uh, difficult to talk about any of the spherot in isolation because they're all different aspects of the same thing. So it would be helpful to have in the back of our minds what we've already done. So briefly, we begin with Keter. Keter means oneness, and that oneness is something we can recognize right now in this moment without even clearing our minds too much. All you have to do... <laughs> is simply recognize that there's one reality and here it is. This is it. That's Keter. And notice when you recognize that, when you bring that simple thought to mind, that reality is, that it just is, right? We're not relating it to anything, we're not judging it, we're not saying anything about it other than we're recognizing existence itself. That there, it, there, there can be uh, a shift into a more calm space just by bringing that simple thought to mind. Then we moved on to Chokhmah, and Chokhmah is the recognition that everything we are perceiving right now is occurring within our awareness. Again, it's very obvious. It's not something we have to stretch for or believe in. It's just recognizing that we are aware right now and that everything that we're aware of on all levels appears in this in this uh, field of consciousness that we are and and so as as chokhma um, is the second sphera there's this basic two-ness of the awareness and what we're aware of then we moved on to bina and bina was recognizing that we have the power to understand things through contemplation which is what we've been doing all along <laughs> because since we started talking about Keter we're using language we're using thought and that's actually a process that's taking place within Bina but the Bina is pointing us beyond the thinking mind so we're not getting rid of the thinking mind we're using the thinking mind to frame and point us beyond the thinking mind which is the oneness and the fact of the fact that we are consciousness and that this oneness is appearing in and as consciousness right now. Then we moved on to Malchut. And Malchut has to do with, uh, it's, it's really the flip side of Keter. So recognizing that there is this one reality that simply is. Then when we come into time, meaning we come into the, into the flow of life, the flow of things as they're changing and happening, that we can recognize that that basic oneness, wait a minute, there we go, I didn't realize that I still had that chant up there, <laughs> we can recognize that the, that the basic oneness is manifest as every particular thing. So whatever we're dealing with, whatever we're aware of, our own bodies, our own thoughts, uh, our own intentions, our successes, our failures, whatever it is that's happening, everything is 
always an embodiment of that basic oneness. So it's 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 about shechina. It's about seeing, recognizing the divine presence or the divine reality in all things. And when we do that, we come into a relationship with the world, with life, the outer world as malchut. So we don't autom the world isn't automatically malchut. We have to make it malchut. And uh, that, that relates to the idea of melech itself. The word melech means king, but there's another word for king, uh, or there's another word for ruler, rather, called moshal. And this word moshal has to do with just a, a it could be like a dictator, like a, um, someone who's ruling by force. The word melech implies because of the biblical context from which it comes it implies that the subjects have have made the the, the melech into a melech it's the melech isn't being imposed but rather melech has to do with how we relate to that person and thus that's how the that was the ideal sense anyway in the the ancient biblical kings how they were supposed to become king is that the the people had to accept them as a king so so that's the world as Malchut when we recognize Shekhinah, we recognize the divinity that's inherent in all things. So today we come to Yesod, which is um, perhaps out of all the Sfirot, the meaning of the word Yesod is perhaps the less or the least descriptive of what it is, because the word Yesod means foundation. So foundation what does that mean, foundation? How, what is that teaching us, that it's a foundation? So on the, in the diagram, the, the most common diagram of the Tree of Life, you'll see all of the spherot kind of coming down from above to below. And then you have Yesod, which is the connecting point between all of the upper spherot and Malchut, which, is, which represents the, the divine presence in the world. So... It's the foundation in the sense that all of the upper spheroid are, are kind of resting on it, and then their energy or their light is being channeled into our physical existence. So, again, that doesn't tell us what Yesod is or how it does that. So we're going to get into that. But in order to do that, um, I want to very briefly go through what the other spherot are above it, because it's hard to talk about how it's the foundation of the upper spherot if we haven't done them yet, and we haven't, because we because we're, we have several more weeks to go. So I'm going to give a very brief um, rundown of those spherot that you may or may not be already familiar with. So after Keter and Chochman Bino that we've done already, those are the upper three that have to do with consciousness. Now we come into qualities that are embodied in personality. They can even be called character traits. And they are chesed, which means loving kindness. This is, this is uh, self-explanatory. It's benevolence, it's love, it's giving, it's service, right? The second one is givora, which means strength, which has to do with um, being strong within yourself, being able to uh, withstand pressures of life and not, not give up, not be deflated. Um, and I alluded before, I think it was in the last class, to the practice of fasting. So that's a way that givora is manifest in malchut. And givora uh, is about self-restricting practices. So anything that has to do with discipline and strengthening, this, strengthening your um, spiritual muscles, so to speak, that's givora. The next one is Teferit, which has to do with the uh, quality of presence as it is projected into the world. So Teferit is represented uh, by the sun and by the heart, and it's in the middle of the tree. It's radiant. It's like the sun radi radiating out its energy. It's also associated with beauty, with creativity, with, with art. So it has to do with self-expression in a, in a beautiful way. So these three triads work together. They're all essential benevolence, loving kindness, but also a sense of strength within yourself and also being able to express yourself in a way that is um, beautiful and, and uh, gives others a sense of consciousness and presence. Oh, thank you, Lisa, for writing that. 
great. So, beautiful. Um, so then the next uh, two are Netzach. Netzach has to do with the quality of persistence. It's kind of like Gevora strength, but it's, it's, in the, it's projected outward in the sense of what we're doing. Can we be consistent? Can we meditate every day? Can we do a little learning every day? Can we stay, can we be aware of what our goal is, whatever it is in life, be it spiritual or other things, and stick to going toward that goal? So Netzach, um, again, on the right side of the tree, I mentioned the right and left side are uh, like yin and yang. They're like uh, complementary opposites of each other. Netzach is on the right side, which is uh, classically uh, symbolized as masculine, so it has that driving, goal-oriented quality to it. That's Netzach. And then finally, Hod is the complement to that, which is not, not going toward a goal, not driving forward, not being consistent with things, but rather being present with this moment as it is and having humility and gratitude. So those two qualities have to complement each other because if we have too much netzach without the hod, then it can become very egocentric and power driven. But if we don't have, if we only have hod, we only have humility and gratitude, then we don't have much energy to accomplish things. So that passive and receptive um, complementary dynamic is very important and it's embodied in a beautiful way on the tree of life. So those are the upper five spherot that we have not colored, covered yet. Chesed, Gevura, Tiferet, Netzach, and Hod. And thank you, Lisa, for writing those out. So what does it mean then, we come back to our question, what does it mean that Yesod is the, uh, is the foundation of these things? So I want to begin with a story. It's a story of the Baal Shem Tov, that one time he was uh, leading prayers in the synagogue. And the, what happened is he, he prolonged the prayers. He, he kind of went so slow with the prayers that the rest of the congregation just went ahead of him and finished the service. And when most people had finished, they, they realized he was still davening, he was davening at such a slow pace. I don't know if you've ever been in a, if you've been in a traditional synagogue, sometimes this is a, an issue in community of like how, how fast people, some people think a person davens too fast and they can't really have good kavanah, they can't put their heart into it. Some people say they daven too slow and we're getting stuck and it's time for lunch. So this is a common dynamic that happens in traditional communities. It's an issue when people are doing something together. And at, in this particular case, he took so long that eventually everybody just left. And uh, he was left there alone. Later on in the afternoon, they, they returned to the synagogue for the afternoon prayer. And he was still davening. He was still davening shacharit, the morning prayer. And so they sat a little bit and he finished finally and he turned around and he was he was upset he felt he felt um i don't know some kind of wounded a little bit and he told them he, and he said look he said you 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 dealt me a harsh separation back then when you left me alone davening and he said let me tell you a parable he said we know that there are birds that fly south for the winter. And so they appear in the warmer countries at certain times of the year. And it happened that the most incredible, beautiful bird that no one had ever seen before flew into one of these southern kingdoms and alighted on the top of a very tall tree and nested there. And someone caught sight of this bird and told the king, this is the most amazing thing. You've got to come check it out. So the king says, okay, let's make a ladder of human beings. Let's climb on each other's shoulders and get to the top so we can check out this bird and, and learn about this incredible creature and, and bring it down. We want, I want you to bring it down for us. And so they did. And so 
person after person climbed on shoulder after shoulder after shoulder and finally a person gets to the top and is checking out the bird and is trying to figure out how to how to take the nest and the bird and bring it back down when the people on the bottom didn't they were asking each other what's going on up there what, who what's are, is anything happening we don't know what's happening and they got frustrated and they thought nothing was happening so they just left and Ed, the whole thing crashed down and everybody fell <laughs> so now this is a this is a really uh it, it's a deep symbolic story um of course we don't want to go and steal bird nests from the top of the tree but we ac it's actually a symbol of bringing something down it's a the tree of course is the tree of life which represents the flow or the shefa of blessing of these different qualities into life into the physical world and those qualities are represented by the sphero that we just talked about loving kindness strength beauty persistence humility gratitude these are the lights the midot that we want to draw into uh, our lived experience moment to moment not just not just when we're meditating on them and so what happened the they the people on the bottom ceased to support the people on the top so the the hint in this story on one level is that the foundation yes so it is community that that's what it is that it takes it takes people working together even though the spiritual path it really is something on us we no one can do it for us we have to do the work ourselves we're on an individual path in a way but at the same time we're all doing it together and supporting each other in that path and that's that's very important but the story doesn't tell us exactly how this happens though we get the sense that there's this ladder and but what does that mean that we're standing on each other's shoulders so there's another story that I think actually brings in the essential quality that can become available through uh, community through being with other people and it's another Baal Shem Tov story so in this story it's Yom Kippur and it's coming to the end of Yom Kippur and the Baal Shem Tov has has davened and the, the Hasidim uh, his disciples are all um, very happy because they're you know because their master had davened the the whole thing and they feel like atonement has been achieved you know they've been cleansed they have they have made a clear slate for the new year now after Yom Kippur ends after the Ne'ila service uh, you 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 make a havdala you do a ritual to separate back into the weekday just like at the end of Shabbat and um, it's a traditional practice to do uh, a kiddush lavana which is the the blessing of the new moon now the new moon already happened because it's the 10th of the month Yom Kippur is the 10th of the month and uh, usually it's the Saturday night the right after Shabbat after the new moon that this blessing is said um, in community you need community to say it you don't do it by yourself and in order to say this blessing you literally have to see the the moon and so it's going to be you know not quite a half moon like a crescent a quarter crescent so if it's cloudy then you can't say the bracha now it so happened that the Baal Shem Tov had a had an intuition that a great calamity was about to befall the Jewish people at that time some kind of pogrom or something something horrible was going to happen and he had the sense that he could avert this calamity if he was able to properly say the blessing on the new moon but guess what it was too cloudy there was no moon that was showing so he he concentrated his mind he tried to use all of his spiritual powers to part the clouds so that the the moon could be visible but to no avail so he um this went on for some time where he would send one of his Hasidim outside to look up in the sky and see if the see if the moon was visible yet again and again nothing happened so finally um, the Baal Shem Tov started to give up hope and he went up to his room 
Apparently he had a room and there were Hasidim that were downstairs and they knew nothing of this. They didn't know what was happening. So they started rejoicing because they were so happy that they had completed the Yom Kippur fast and that their master had, had um, effected atonement for them. And so they started to dance and they started to sing and they start moving in circles and circle dancing and at some point they eventually the whole throng makes their way upstairs and they burst into his room and they reach out and he's sitting there sad they reach out and they draw him into the dance and he starts to like a flame that catches on a on, on, a, on a log the flame starts to go up within himself and he begins to uh, dance and sing in joy and just at that moment, one of the Hasidim runs in and he says, Master, the moon has appeared. The moon has appeared. So, all of these things are pointing to something actually very simple, which is that in order to affect all of these deeper spiritual qualities, it's important to have a basic positivity, a basic joy, a basic, and, and that joyfulness is, it's not a complicated thing. And it's also not to say that, that it doesn't mean denying grief or denying sadness in any way. But what it's hinting at is that there is, we have an ability to relate to our experience even if, even if there's a sadness in our experience, we have the ability to relate to that experience through the lens of positivity, through the lens of joy. And community is obviously a great way to help with this um, and, and necessary for a lot of people. This is especially, of course, relevant in our time when a lot of people are feeling isolated. A lot of people feel probably like like the Baal Shem Tov felt when he was left alone in the synagogue, people are feeling a certain amount of isolation. So Baruch Hashem, at least we can, you know, it's amazing that we have this technology. This wasn't available a very short time ago that we can have some connection. It's not the same as being in the same room, but it's, but it's nice. It has an effect. And I think everybody feels that when we come together to uh, practice and learn and so on. But it's also important to know that when we when we get that boost when we get that smile ignited through others it's also a good reminder that that smile was a potential that was there all along and that if we practice we can learn how to evoke that inner smile we can learn how to uh, relate to our experience through the lens of positivity basically having a positive attitude again it doesn't mean it doesn't mean whitewashing it doesn't mean denying sorrow in any kind of way or not feeling sorrow it means even in the feeling of sorrow that you can smile at the sorrow because that's actually a choice that we can make and uh, again that's why I always um, have that as part of our meditation saying bring a little smile and I would say this is something that's which is not in the story but I would add to it that uh, humor plays a little role in this as well. <laughs> All right, God bless the God bless the comedians. So let's look at some uh, some texts which I think wonderfully illustrate uh, what we're talking about here. Okay, one moment. Okay, here's the first verse. You may have you may know this one. It's a great verse to to memorize and to know. This is from Psalm 100. It says, "Eve duet Hashem besimcha. Serve the divine with joy." This is one of the 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 mantras of Hasidism. That it's the foundation if you're not serving with joy, then all of those other qualities are going to be um, rendered inaccessible. Eve duet Hashem besimcha bo lefanav, come before the divine, birnana, 
with uh, means joyous song. There's a great melody. Eve duet Hashem besimcha. Eve duet Hashem besimcha. Bo lefana birnana, lefana birnana. Eve duet Hashem besimcha. Eve duet Hashem besimcha. Bo lefana birnana, lefana birnana. So this is a great line. This this psalm comes in the uh, in the beginning of Pesuke de Zimra every day. The the psalms in the beginning of the davening after the morning blessings comes this Psalm 100. Okay, now let's look at the the parsha for this week. Again, this parsha amazingly and serendipitously wonderfully illustrates this principle of yesod, which is joy and and connection and community. So it says. Re'e anochi noten lifnechem hayom bracha uklala. Re'e, see, recognize, understand. I am giving or setting before you today bracha, blessing, and curse. Now you might think, you know, one way of understanding this verse is that in the plain meaning, it's saying if you follow the commandments, then blessings will come, and if not, then not. But there's, and that's valid, but there's a deeper way of seeing this too, which is that it says the bracha and the klala are being set before you hayom, today. So we're not talking about if you do this, then later that will happen. We're talking about you have the power to choose blessing right now. Right now. Let's see what it says after that. Et bracha asher tishma'u. It's blessing if you listen. If you listen. Listening, again, is uh, on the deeper level, is pointing to awareness. It's pointing to being conscious, being present. Et mitzvot Adonai Elohechem. Literally, the commandments of Hashem, your God. But, again, the deeper hint the word mitzvah is related to the Aramaic tzavta, which means connection. So bringing us back to our both of our Baal Shem Tov stories, connection, that when we connect with each other, and, that we'll, and when we bring our awareness in connection with the present moment, which is really the, the deepest level that, that we can do whether we're, we're, whether we're with others or not then we are receiving the mitzvah, the connection between ourselves and the divinity that's inherent in this moment. Asher anochi etchem hayom. Again, it's hayom. This connection is possible in the present moment, in every moment that we bring our awareness to it. That's how we connect with blessing, because inherent within our awareness is this basic positivity. This joy that does not need a cause. Just like the Baal Shem Tov was drawn into the dance just for causeless joy. He had plenty of reason to not be joyful. He knew that something bad was going to happen if he couldn't say the blessing on the new moon. And yet he, his uh, companions were able to uh, remind him of the joy that is inherent in presence rather than the sorrow that comes from thinking about the future. <laughs> <laughs> that's the the deeper message of the story that's that's always before us. Curse if you don't listen, if you in other words, if you're not present and you don't connect with the divinity inherent in all existence, which is also your own divinity, inherent in your own consciousness. And you turn away from the, the path. You turn from this path which I am uh, connecting you to. We could translate it as command you, but it also can mean connecting you to. 
to walk after some other kinds of things that you are making into gods, asher lo yadatem, that you don't know. Again, lo yadatem, you don't know. This word da'at means not just intellectual knowledge, it means not connecting yourself to. As in the story of Adam and Eve, when Adam and Chava uh, know each other, that's, a, that's an expression for sexual intimacy. So that's the same word of knowing. And so the idea here is that when we are making something into our primary concern, then we're, it's like we're making it into a god. To bring it back into the story, the Baal Shem Tov was, his mind was, was fixated on something that he didn't really know it was in the future. I mean, he had a sense it was coming, but it wasn't actually his present experience. And so, this, and so that brings about this experience of curse when we're too much caught up in the future or in the past. But if we come to the derech, which is hayom, as it says here, the, the path that we are on right now, then we can bring forth this basic positivity. Okay. There is another piece uh, from the Parsha that, um, that goes a little deeper into this and shows how this quality of joy, of yesod, is the foundation of those five spherot that we talked about in the beginning. Loving kindness, strength, beauty, persistence, and humility. That's a fast way of saying it. <laughs> so it says, V'haya hamakom asher yivchar Adonai lohechem bo l'shakin shamo sham. So there's a place that the divine is choosing for its name to dwell. It's kind of an obscure line. What does that mean? Well, in the plain meaning, it's talking about um, in the biblical narrative, it's talking about what, that when they come into the land, that God will choose the place that they will put the, um, the Mishkan and eventually build the temple. But on, but on the deeper level, on the level that we can really apply right now, it's that, it's the recognition that where we are in this moment is where the divine puts us. We, we shouldn't be projecting the goal or the, the fruit or the, the, the spiritual goal, meaning we shouldn't be thinking of God as somewhere else. God has put us here in this place that we're at right now, and that's where we need to be. This is where Hashem's name is. Hashem's name means existence. So come into this moment and recognize the divine in this place, in this makom. The word makom, which means place right here, is actually another name for God. It's a divine name. So it can mean literally just a place, but it can also mean God. Why? Because God is this place that we're at right now. And then it says these different kinds of offerings that you're going to bring. Again, in the plain meaning, this means that when you build the temple, you're going to bring these different offerings. So it says, what are the offerings? It says, uh, Olotechem, which literally means ascensions or going up. It refers to sacrifices that were burned, so the smoke goes up. That's what that means. And then Zivchechem also means offerings. The, the root of this, which is Zion Bet Chet, is the same as Mizbeach, which is altar. So it's the idea of offering something on the altar, which once again is an attitude we can bring to this moment is offering ourselves on the altar of the present moment. It brings to mind the the image of Avraham offering his most beloved son that he's willing to give up uh, that which is most precious to him. Then it says Masro uh, Techem, which is which are tithes, Uturumat Yedchem which teruma also means to, to lift up. It's another word for elevating. And yedchem means with your hands. So it means that through our kavanah, 
in what we're doing and our actions that we do with our hands we can elevate our actions through making them into offerings and then mivchar um, nidrechem means um, the choicest of your vows a vow means that you're going to promise to do something so these are five things here in English the ascensions the offerings the tithes those that you elevate with your hands and your vows uh, are hinting at again the five spherot that we mentioned um, let's look ahead and we'll see how it works here the Olotechem, your ascensions, this is Teferet, because Teferet has to do with uh, transcendence. As we said, it's, it's beauty or radiance, the, the, the feeling of presence that we can get. When we become present, we get a sense of the transcendent within the mundane. And so Olotechem, the ascensions, represents Teferet. Ziv Chechem means that which we are giving. This is Chesed, loving kindness. Masro Techem, tithes. It means that we're restricting ourselves. We're not taking all of what is ours, but we're taking some of it and giving it away. So that's Givura. That's a self restriction. That show, that's inner strength we need to give some of our own riches away to benefit others. Terumat Yedchem, this means the actions. Um, that we do that are elevated through the quality of uh, gratitude and humility when we do our actions with that quality those qualities of gratitude and humility then they have an, a more transcendent or elevated quality and finally the choicest of your vows again vowing means having uh, having the the persistence and the consistency to follow through with what we say we're going to do and that's the quality of Netzach now finally let's look um, back at the next the very next verse here you shall rejoice usmachtem you shall rejoice lifnei Adonai Elohechem before the divine so this quality of rejoicing again is yesod and who do we rejoice with we rejoice with our sons and daughters our male and female servants along with the levite in your gates the levi'im because the levi'im are the the ritual uh, keepers of the temple or the mishkan so they don't they don't have their own portion their own land but on a symbolic level we have the five spherot again. Your sons, again, that's the right side of the tree, that's chesed. Your daughters, gevura. And then the qualities that we need to bring about chesed and gevura, loving kindness and inner strength. And therefore, they're referred to as avadim, as servants. Netzach, which is the quality of being persistent and following through. And hod, which is the quality of being. Um, having gratitude and and humility and finally the Levite Halevi Asher Bisharechem the Levite in your gates means to ferret because to ferret is beauty the Levites their job was to um, was to sing was to make song and to keep the temple beautiful all of the beautiful ritual objects and so on and so we have in these um, in these texts hints of something uh, very fundamental and basic which is if we want to draw down those five qualities which we'll be exploring in the next five weeks we have to have the foundation and that foundation is positivity it's being able to smile okay I've got a lot of text for you today <laughs> I hope it's not too much but I want to show you one more this is from the Haf Torah. It's from Isaiah. Aniya soara lo nuchama hine anochi marbits papu chavanaich visadtiich 
This is a this is Isaiah the prophet comforting the children of Israel, telling them that they are going to be renewed, they are going to be have redemption. And that redemption is going is is going to come about through Yesod. The word Yesod is right in here. It says Visad Ticha. Here it is in the English transliteration. Yesod T means Yeso is is the same word as Yesod. It means your foundations. So I will lay your floor stones upon pearl. This is your 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 floor stones. Your foundation is on the on the sphere of Malchut, and they will be made with sapphires. Again, a, a, a euphemism for the spiritual qualities of the sphere that will um, come down when a person becomes uh, comforted. Then it says a little bit later, something which is very key for understanding about how to bring this quality of yesod and joy into our into any moment it says ho hoy kolt same lechula mayim all who are thirsty come for water even if you have no money come buy food and eat buy food without money wine and milk without cost it's very interesting it doesn't say it doesn't say you don't have to buy it, it'll be given to you. It says you should buy it, you're still buying it, but not with money. <laughs> so what does this mean? Well, this is this is the the process of bringing the quality of yesod into the moment. We still have to buy it, meaning we uh there's something we need to do. There's an action we're taking. It's a, it's a it's an effortless action. We don't have to give anything up by doing the action. It's not like money where you're giving away part of your wealth. Rather, you are getting something, but you have to still have to buy it in a sense, meaning you have to put yourself into alignment with it. How do we do that? Well, there's a million ways we could do it. A million ways we could do it. When we're meditating, I invite you to just tell your mouth to make a little smile. <laughs> That's one little way to do it. But of course, there are many, many ways, each of us individually, we have to know what are the things that bring us joy. Um, you know, the Maggid of Medrash said, those things that bring you joy are, those are your tools for connecting with the divine. Uh, know what they are and embrace them with all of your, all of your being. Embrace them with all of your heart because they are your path. They are the derech hayom, the path of the moment for you to take. So for the, for the singing for this week, uh, we have the chant which comes from the slichot prayers. Slichot are prayers of forgiveness that are said prior to the high holidays beginning, um, they're saying, uh, there's said during the, uh, during the services and so on. And they are, they're crying out in a sense, crying out for, for mercy, crying out for compassion. So why is this, why is this a, a good, um, a good prayer for joy? <laughs> Maybe we should have used Eve duet Hashem Basimcha, serve God with joy. But the point is, that's exactly the point, is that we're taking something, a prayer, which comes from a broken heart, which comes from the depths of our sadness, and we're singing it in a joyful way. There's a story of another Baal Shem Tov story um, about the Baal Shem Tov that he, he went to a town once, and the people of the town told him that the, that the Shliach Tzibur, the one who leads prayers for Yom Kippur, sings the... Um, sings the, the 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 list of sins like oh we have sinned you know um avinu malkenu forgive us he sings all those prayers with joyful happy tones and the the Baal Shem Tov that 
apparently this this experience of the Baal Shem was some kind of turning point for him, that he learned something from that person who's unknown. We don't know who that person was, but he met this this uh, Shliach Tzibur who sang all of the lists of uh, prayers with um, with joy. And so that is the, uh, there's a Hasidic melody for this piece, Rachamana de'ane le'aniye aneya, the compassionate one who cares for the poor, answer us. It says here, will answer us, but really it's a plea. It's like, please answer us. Harachaman, or Rachamana de'ane litavire liba anena, the one who cares for the brokenhearted, answer us, answer us. And we sing it in a in a joyful in a joyful tone okay here we go First part, sing together. Rachamana de anela niye anena hay ay ay alalai la. Rachamana de anela niye anena hay ay. Next piece. Arachamana de ane li tevire liba ane na ane na arachamana de. come into meditation, bringing your right hand to your heart, invoking that quality of chesed and teferet, loving kindness, radiating outward from your heart, offering your awareness as a, as a zevach, as an offering on the mizbeach, on the altar of this moment, 
with the offering word lecha on a long out breath. Deep breath in, lecha. And bringing your left hand to your belly, feeling awareness shining down into your organs. Soaking all of your cells in the light of consciousness, shining downward from your belly, down through your legs, to your feet and toes. Shining upward into your chest, your heart, your lungs, your shoulders, your neck, your upper back. Flowing down through your arms to your hands and fingers, connecting with your heart and belly. Shining upward into your face, facial muscles, brain and nervous system, enlivening the whole temple of your body with the light of presence and bringing that little smile to your lips making yourself a channel for simcha, for joy, being that yesod, that foundation through which the light can flow. Resting awareness in the flow of your breathing. Being on the derech hayom, the path of this moment. Just being on the path of this moment. And anchoring this body awareness with Naase. Deep breath in. Naase. And bringing right hand to your forehead, allowing that radiance to shine outward into the space around you, letting your awareness rest on whatever is present sounds, objects, beings out in your space and recognizing that you are Chochmah. You are this vast field of consciousness without boundary, without border, vast and infinite field of awareness that you are within which everything comes and goes in your experience. Venishma, deep breath in. Venishma. Kissing your fingers, relaxing your hands. Atahu atyahi, you who are reality itself, you who are the source of all being, you are ever present. We recognize you, we rest in you, we give ourselves to you. We are not separate, we are not something other than you. Atahu atyahi. Continuing the chant inward, letting your mind rest in the tefillah, atahu, or atyahi, or both. Just being the open space within which thoughts come and go, not pushing thoughts away, but not becoming involved. Instead, just anchoring in atahu, atyahi, and we'll come into silence for a short time, uh, brief, brief meditation for a couple minutes.
Amen, amen. So closing the meditation, bringing your right hand to your heart. Once again, offering awareness with Lecha. Deep breath in. Lecha. Bringing left hand to your belly, feeling awareness, shining down into your organs and shining out from there to fill the vessel of your whole body. Naase, deep breath in. Naase. And bringing right hand to your forehead, awareness shining out into space, recognizing that you are this light, you are this vast, silent openness within which this moment arises. Venishma, deep breath in. Venishma. Kissing fingers, relaxing your hands as we come into this week of Yesod, the foundation of positivity, the foundation of simcha, of joy, and of connection and of community. May we practice bringing the joy that is inherent in our heart, even to the broken heart, even to the loss, even to the great sadness that we may feel and that certainly is in the world today. O say shalom bim Roma, who ya say shalom, Alenu via ko Yisrael, via ko Yoshve Tevel, Vimru Amen. Amen. So wonderful to see everybody on here today. Thank you so much for joining in. We're going to do a healing blessing. And we'll do uh, Mourner's Kaddish as well. We've got a nice group on here. Um, just a reminder, if you're, on, if you're watching on Facebook, to please leave a comment and say hello so we, we know you're with us. And uh, also a reminder that um, for those who are uh, not part of the Torah Awakening community, um, we meditate and chant every day during the week. Um, pretty much every day except Shabbat. So this chant that we learned today, Rachamana, and all the chants we do on Sundays during this course and far beyond this course, um, we come back and meditate together um, daily. So you can uh, try a Torah of Awakening membership. Um, it's uh, a contribution of $36 a month is, is where it starts. And um, and you're welcome to try it free for a month. So I'm going to put the link on there if you're interested in that. And uh, I also want to say that our High Holiday registration has begun. So those who want to join in with us and sing all these songs that we're doing in these classes um, for the High Holidays um, with the band, we have these recordings and a uh, combination of Zoom meetings and um, audio, audio uh, prayer experiences with the recordings of the band. Um, you can get that at... Um, sign up at Urban Adama. Actually, oh, if someone would like to, maybe Laura or Lisa, if you want to put the URL up for the high holiday registration, that would be great. Okay. Um, I see some people are doing it already, and that's great to put, um, to type in, in the chat or in the Facebook comments, names of folks that you would like to make a healing blessing. You can do that now. We'll sing El Na Rafan Allah. El. I'll sing a little lower. El Na Rafan Allah. El Na Rafan Allah. El Na Rafan Rufua Shalema, complete healing. El na refana la, El na refana la, El na refana la, Rufua Shalema, Yira 
complete healing of body, mind, and spirit for those that we pray for and all those who are in need. And we say Amen. You're welcome to unmute yourself and say Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And as we come into mourners, Amen. 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 And then you can mute yourself again. Mute yourself again. Okay. So um, the amains are, are great to uh, unmute yourself for. And then you just have to mute yourself again because otherwise it'll feed back and uh, create sounds and so on. So um, I invite those who are, in, who are mourning a loved one from the last 11 months, uh, who lost a loved one in the last 11 months or are observing yard site this week uh, or saying Kaddish for another reason to please rise and body your spirit. And um, everyone else who's not saying Kaddish, please do briefly unmute yourselves for the responses. Amen, Brichu, and the other responses if you know them. The first Amen happens right away. Yit Gadal v'yit Kadash Shemei Rabbah. Amen. V'yalma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute. Bechaye chon uviome chon uvechaye de ho bet Yisrael ba agala uvizman kari viemru amen. Amen. Yeheshme raba mevorach leolam ulame omaya. Yit barach viishtabach viit paar viit romam viit nase viit hadar viit ale viit halal shemede kudsha brichu. La Ela mi ko birchata veshirata. Tush bechata venechamata de amiran be alma viemru. Amen. 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 Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya. Vechaim alenu viyoko yisrael viemru. Amen. Amen. O se shalom bim roma. Hu ya ase shalom alenu viyoko yisrael. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, supporting the mourners with Kaddish. And um, for those who are going to go on into your day, thank you for joining. Uh, it's wonderful being with you, learning with you, and practicing with you today. And for those who'd like to stay on, we're going to do some. Uh, Q&A and uh, dialogue. So if folks have comments or insights or questions or anything at all, um, let's keep it on the subject first. So if you have questions that are more technical, like high holiday tickets or whatever, we can do that at the end. But for now, let's keep it on the, on the learning that we did today. Yeah. And you're welcome to uh, raise your hand. There should be a, a hand raising icon that you can see at the bottom. Um, you may have to click on participants to do that, and then I can call on folks, and that's the easiest way to do it. Let's see here. Well, thank you, Melody. I see your message there. All right. Anybody want to raise your hand? This is your chance. This is your chance. Ah, okay, Merrily. You're welcome to unmute yourself and go ahead. Um, you were talking about the different pieces that we've been talking about and um, it's hard for me. I'm not so well versed in this. Um, you have yeah. a tree picture with colors and and words and stuff and i was wondering if uh you could tell me where to find that if i could just print that out and have it as a reference each time when we talk what a great idea <laughs> um <laughs> okay so um honest so there there's uh there there's the common image of the tree of life which i've been referencing a lot in this and um the truth is that if you just 
go to your browser and write Tree of Life Kabbalah in there and click and then click on images, you'll get a million different images of this same thing that I'm talking about. I don't own one myself. I mean, I can copy it off the internet and set and post it, um, which I do sometimes. <laughs> um, there are different versions of it, but there are lots of great ones. You know what? I'm just going to find one real quick and I'll show you what I mean. There's one that you have with your site that has colors, different ones yes. with different colors. And that, that was something significant. Yes, and so that's I'm that gonna is. I'm gonna talk about that too, because that's a different version. Um, that's a version that I uh, well I I kind of created it, but I don't like to say it like that because it's something that developed over time through practice and uh, working with the spherot and it's part of the integral Kabbalah level three practice that we do. So that is on there and that is um, the the purpose of that is to uh, give a diagram of the practice that we do on Wednesday nights. So we just we've had one Wednesday night class already. Are you in that class now, Marilee? I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Maybe. Well, well, it's so that class is given in the context of the upper level membership. So anybody who's interested in that, um, I put down the link there. You can try membership free for a month. But when you do, you have to upgrade to the upper one of the upper levels. And that class is given in that upper level membership. Um, and what we're doing is we're taking everything that we're learning in this Sunday class, which is learning about the meanings of the spherot and putting them into a practice that you can do every day of visualization and also including the 22 Hebrew letters. And that practice is represented by the image that you're talking about. So that image makes more sense when you learn the practice, which you can, which you're welcome to do with us now if you want to join in that or if anybody wants to join in that. One class has already happened, but they're all recorded. And of course, you can go back if you missed anything. Um, if you're not ready for it now, it'll also be available in a different way later as a recorded class, but it's uh, fun to join in at the time. I'm going to just show you a few trees of life here that I found instantly. Okay, here we go. This is the image that I was referring to today. Um, this is actually, this image is actually um, a non-Jewish version, and you can tell because it's got these two pathways coming down from Netzach and Hod connecting to Malchut. Um, the more, so this is, there's a whole non-Jewish uh, branch of Kabbalah that has its own history, um, and this image developed in that, and I, I don't know why exactly it developed that way, but let's see if we find some uh, Jewish versions that have, no, they're all non-Jewish versions, look at that. Oh, here's a Jewish version. <laughs> so you can see um, in this version, Yesod is connecting to Malchut, and that's what I was talking about, that in classical Jewish Kabbalah imagery, Yesod is seen as the connecting point between all of the upper spherot and Malchut. You can also see this 11th sphera here, which is called Da'at or Das, which means knowledge, which we talked about today when I referred to the verb um, to know in Hebrew, which means connection or intimacy. It's like a different version of Yesod, but it's bringing the top three spherot of consciousness into connection with the lower seven. And then the upper five are being, there's another connecting point, which is Yesod, which is joy. So I would call Da'at as presence, connecting presence with the body, bringing your awareness down into your body. And Yesod is the more attitudinal approach, you know, having having positivity through which you can channel these qualities into Malchut, which means into life, into, into all of our life situations. Okay, is that helpful? Yes, thank you. Beautiful. Okay. How about Fran? Would you like yes, to I have I have a question. Great. Um, how how um, important are do you feel the hand movements are, you know, from here to here to here? Because I find them distracting, you know, well, taking away from just the pure awareness. Um, I I 
my opinion is that if you find it distracting, then just drop it. You don't have to do that because the purpose of it is 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 the supposed to be the opposite of distracting. It's supposed to help to direct your awareness. And for a lot of people, the kinesthetic aspect of body movement um, directing uh, what we're doing, like having a physical component, helps to uh, make that shift. So. For example, like to open a, open a door, if you have a key that unlocks the lock. So when we create, and this is a principle in je, for ritual in general, any type of ritual mo, movements like um, saying kiddush on a cup of wine and then drinking the wine. It's actually the words of kiddush that are, that are kiddush. It's not the wine. <laughs> Some people say, just say bere pri agafen. And that's a good start, but that's actually not kiddish. That's just a blessing over wine. Really, kiddish is pointing our awareness to recognize this, the the sanctity or the the divine reality that's present um, that we're focusing on for Shabbat. So it's a sanctification of Shabbat. That's what kiddush means. But it seems to work so much better if you have a cup of wine. So we <laughs> do it in conjunction with that. Anyway, so the the physical movements are supposed to be that. And if they're not working for you, and everybody's different, so that's fine, um, then just direct your attention with your mind to the different parts of your body without using the hand motions. You know, I know there's a, a bunch of us that um, seem to be uh, Tibetan Buddhist meditators. And, you know, if we've done Vajrayana practice, then, you know, bring the the energy here, 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 without you know, you start looking at the hand movements, and it takes it away. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I would say do what works for you. <laughs> the hand motions, by the way, are... Um, they, they're, they're rooted in motions that are done traditionally during tefillah. So that's where they're coming from. Um, so, for example, the touching of the, of the heart um, refers to the... Uh, it's really derived from the touching of the tefillin that's on the left arm next to the heart. It also happens in Pesuke de Zimra, the opening uh, psalms, where you take the two uh, tzitzit and you bring them to your heart to say, Baruch She'emar. Um, the bringing together of the tzitzit, which are supposed to remind us of our um, doing holy action in the world, that's about touching the belly. And of course, touching the forehead is has to do with um, the the head to fill in, um, which are touched and kissed. So all these, so these are the, the practice. The integral Kabbalah meditation practice is um, is is a way of taking those elements that are part of traditional Jewish practice and um, putting them together in a in a way that is uh, more universal and accessible for everyone. Um, but if you do the traditional practices also, this helps to deepen that. And if you don't, it's a way of, of bringing it in. Thank you. Okay, and Ruth. Hi, Ruth. Hi. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think I have a question exactly, but I was taking some notes and the thing that really struck me that I was writing a lot about trying to catch was um, about um, your teachings about blessing and curse. And I was just very grateful for that because in the, at least in the um, high holiday um, siddur that we have been using, at my um, synagogue here, you know, it's hard to get through that language. It's and it's 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 been like that for a long time, and to reinterpret it uh, as you know today and 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 to 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 take it away from being cursed if you don't do all these things is it's a relief and. Yeah. It, it's really much more real and much more um, understandable to me. So I just want to thank you for that, for, you know, parsing that out a lot. Baruch Hashem, yeah. Those, um, the, some of the language in the, in the liturgy on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is, is devastatingly harsh language. Uh, 
definitely not a not an upper <laughs> um, and yet that's the, the what the teachings uh, brought through um, Hasidism that were always there but you know br brought into the foreground more is that um, this devastatingness of course as we know as we more know now more than ever is part of the human experience and so these the ritualizing it and bringing it to mind purposefully and transforming it and uplifting it into prayer into blessing um, it's the same idea as what I was talking about with the Rahman itself Rahman is a plea for mercy so it's not it's not like a, a joyful the content of the words aren't joyful um, later we will we'll actually look at some of that devastating language in this class um, but um, this is a foretaste of it Rahamana have have mercy have compassion bring healing bring renewal bring blessing but singing it in a joyful way <laughs> you know that's the that's the the genius the genius of Judaism um, that genius gets lost if we just get bogged down in the heaviness of the language. It, it, it has to be the two sides brought together, which is the alchemy. Thanks, Ruth. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone else here. All right. All right, well, um, I'm going to shift the screen so I can see everybody all right wonderful some folks stuck around to the, the the bitter end beautiful great to see you Marilyn and Ruth and Manya and Susan and Marilee and Cheryl and Lillian and Cindy Anon and Fran and Betty and some other folks without cameras Rosemary uh, Laura Poppy and Bibi Deborah and Nancy and thank you so much for Lisa for helping out um, Lisa is behind the scenes on all these Sunday things thank God and she also um, makes the more beautiful looking text slides with the orange colors and all that <laughs> she said the first after the first class she said you got to get something a little better looking than the white thing you had <laughs> but she actually does them so thank you so much Lisa for that and for helping uh, supporting all blessings to everybody. Have a wonderful week. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Thank you. You can unmute and say uh, goodbye if you like. Daraba. Thank you, Brian. Um, to Daraba. Bye, Bye Thank everyone. You, Brian. Bye. Sunday Sweet. mornings are wonderful. Thank yeah. God. Thank Be well. Yeah. Have well, a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Well. If you're around for meditation tomorrow, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank Be you. well.